Today we're going to be taking a look at um, postural disconnect in throwing and what to look for basically at the end of your throw um, to kind of break down or determine if this is an issue you're having because this can be a significant or indicate a, a significant loss of transfer of energy. Um, so we're going to start at looking at a throw for myself here and seeing actually how poorly my throwing has kind of um, gone as I've been throwing less and less. But you can see basically what we're looking at is our head in relation to it, or what happens with our head in relation to our arm as it gets into external rotation. So we can see that my posture is pretty well maintained here. But then as my arm starts externally rotating, we're going to see the head go to the left, that hand falling too close to the head. So ideally we want, once you get up into, I guess it used to be called the high cock position, whatever you want to call it, when your arm gets flipped up, we want the space between the head and the hand to maintain its relationship, right? A lot of times with this postural disconnect, you'll see the hand coming close to the head here, the head's gonna go left. So as we said, the posture kind of got maintained here. Once it started getting flipped up, the head goes left, the hand falls in towards the head, and then it continues going left. So the head continues going left as external rotation starts. And then it looks like my arm is almost like rotating out away from my body. So it's not rotating, it's not going into external width rotation, but it's rotating away. So the head's going down to the left and then the, the ball, my arm is coming out and to the right. So that's a big cue that we're looking for with a postural disconnect at the end. And what that does is whatever energy that you've built up here, right, throughout kind of your loading phase, it gets, some of it gets lost, some of it gets leaked because now the energy isn't being directed, you know, up the chain, but instead we're leaking some to the left here as the arm comes up to the right. So just watch it one more time in regular speed. All right, so now some examples of what we do want to see. So here's Chapman um, from the side and a pen. And so we're going to see a starting posture here as he moves out. We can see that his head kind of stays on that line. And then as the ball gets accelerated forward, the ball gets accelerated basically like you can think about it in the same in, as as in the same way in the same direction as the head so his head is going a little bit to the left here but it's like he's rotating through his center he's not rotating away from a center his arms not rotating away from his head right i mean the ball is going to have to go away from the head yes but it should be delivered it, like once it gets flipped up you, you can think about delivering it on a line forward versus hooking it out to the left while your body goes the opposite direction. And you also notice with Chapman that once it gets here, the space between his head and the ball doesn't close, right? This relationship is maintained as he gets into more external rotation and starts accelerating it forward. Another one, Hicks. Again, we're going to see the same thing. Once he gets here, right? The ball isn't going to get closer to his head, but instead, I mean, this one's a pretty low frame rate, so it's kind of harder to tell. But again, you can see the head is going forward, and the arm is in relation to that. Verlander, this one's, it's pretty easy to see in this one. Um, watch it slow to start. And this one's easy to contrast against what we saw um, in the clip earlier of myself where we saw it get disconnected. But we can see that, again, this relationship here, his hand isn't sinking in closer to his head. It's maintaining the relationship there, and then it's getting accelerated forward. So, like, the ball stays here as the body works around it. And this is a good indication of you actually working through your rotation versus working off of your rotation to the left. If you look at it from the front, um, you can think about like rotating around your spine instead of your spine going left and your arm going right. And that's going to create that kind of whip effect um, that we see a lot of hard throwers, a lot of hard throwers have. But Verlander, this is a really good example to see. The head isn't moving left, the arm's not moving 
out to the right, but instead he's maintained this relationship, maintaining his posture as his arm then accelerates up and through release. We got another one, Otani. We play in full speed first. So again, same thing. We don't see a huge posture change, right? But instead, he's accelerating up and through his current posture. And then Pedro Martinez for the last one for a lower arm slot. Right, so with lower arm slot guys, it's easy to kind of get that false external and let the hand fall in too close to the head. Like when his arm gets flipped up here, a lot of times you'll see this ball get too close to the head and you kind of lose um, relationship with the rest of the body, right? It kind of falls down and then swings out as, as the thrower goes to accelerate. But Pedro does a really good job of keeping it, keeping that same distance hand to head. And then when he goes to accelerate, what that's going to allow him to do is to actually use the pec, um, use the lat to kind of create this this portion here. Or again, it's not false external. His his hand isn't too close to his head where he's just creating elbow flexion, but instead maintains that relationship. And then he's able to actually whip it forward with his midsection, with his torso, um, and with his pec.